Hello and welcome to Springboard, your virtual university. My name is Albert Okran, welcoming you on behalf of the Virtual Academic Board shared by Comfort. This is your most inspirational show and the point where the greatest minds converge. Springboard is brought to you by the Springboard Roadshow Foundation and proudly sponsored by MTN Pulse, the enterprise group UMB Bank with Media Partnership with the Multimedia Group and the Graphic Communications Group. For the past number of weeks, we've been looking at my top 10, this very popular series capturing the foremost principles in the lives of mentors from various fields. We've had the privilege of hanging out with Moses K. Baden, Professor Audrey Gajipo, Reverend Daniel Obamitete, Dr. Opokuwari Ampuma, Ibo White, Uncle Ibo White, Bishop Patricia Sapo, Professor Florence Dolphine, and Adiki IETV, and of course, Professor Ernest IET, who came on last week. Very exciting edition. Today, we climb a notch higher and cross over all the way to a circle here in the gardens with somebody that is an absolute legend, Professor of Ethnomusicology, the former president of Musica, chairman of COSGA, and the one and only Ganes Eja Konimo. Eja Konimo, good to see you. Thank you. I don't know, but it's just such a blessing to be able to, to sit with you today to distill the biggest principles of your life. Thank you for making time to to speak to the young people of Ghana. Let's start with the origin of your name. I, li I like the name, Eja Konimo. Hmm. What, what is the origin of the name? That I was born, and my daddy gave me the name <coughs> Kwabinabwa Bonsim. I was baptized as a Methodist with the name Daniel Amponsa. When I went on stage, I took the name Ko Nimo. Ko Friday meal born. Nimo, somebody who takes blame for something he has not done. So I have three names. Interestingly, Ghanaians are giving me Eja, and I'm thankful to Ghanaians for that. So Eja is a, is a, is a, is a word depicting Anna, a father. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. So you must be a father of music because everybody knows you for your music. Let's start with your early days. I'm just curious about when you actually got to discover your talent in music. How hmm. was growing up like? I think... I started my music the very day I was born because I cried. I sang my first melody. I was born in a village, Fonse, at Chumakwa My father was a trumpeter, and my mother was a singer in the Methodist Square. At dawn, the old women would do a nyongkro, which, according to Mami of Fuyabasa, means songs for nation building, around dawn. Every day. Usually the weekends. Then I was sitting with the old women. And nyongkro means menina. The old women will gather around. And they'll be singing and clapping. They will be singing in turns. They'll be calling names of their relatives who have led the good life to be called ancestors. And so there's a proverb which says, So new oba wa nyung kromwa udinim pem. And my duty at that time. Let me explore the meaning of that. Do I get a sense that? If you live a good life and feature in those kinds of songs, your name never passes on. Yeah. You see, let's go to the very beginning of society communities. Almost always there is a leader. 
who might be a hunter, who might lead expansionist campaigns in expanding. So these are called men of valor, men who qualify to be called ancestors. So in the singing, <clears throat> when it comes to your turn, you call the names of all your relatives. The good ones. Uh -huh. So if your sibling is in that group, your name will never be missing. Right. Mm -hmm. I understand. So you used to sit to the old women and, and sing, participate in yeah. that kind of music. Uh, at that time, I wasn't singing, but I was just there listening to them. And my duty was to go to Kumasi because the, the people donated money at that time to buy bags of salt and chili to the village. And this will be distributed for every woman in the village. And an old woman by name Nana Abenechijina was a leader. And in fact, she taught me this song. Mitro Kakami, Mitro Kakami. Kakami Ampa Ukua Mwasia Nancy. Or Don Sosurukusia Kuya Fondo Fu Ukuya Sepenibi Oho. No of us. No need, maybe. And I saw Buano and Casu be one of the child, dear. And Penny Fosse, what you of a child was it to achieve? And it's a song. Yeah. You want to sing it? Eh. Uh, okay, so if you just joined us, this is the legendary Konimo just opening up about his life to us, and he's going to give you a song that he just spoke about. Mitro Kakamio, Minro Kakamio, Kakamio, and Poku, and Mosi and Ansio. Mitro Kakamio, Minro Kakamio, Kakamio, and Poku, and Mosi and Ansio. Odom says, Rekusi and Nancy would not fail. And Nancy would not fail, Nancy. Oh, queer, and Nancy would so I recorded this song. What year was that? 1982. And, um, Nipa, maybe a dear no, or so near Sassy. Only have four souls in a Sassy yet. Say, go quite near ya, a bell ho. A banya ya, a broncao ho. Banjo ho. Banchi ni adeje bo di tata me di ane dosu. So 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 you just you just described a principle that I read yesterday from a writer called Jim Ron who says if you really determine to do something you can do it. Yes. And if you don't want to do it too, you can find an excuse. Mm. I get the impression from what you just said that. If you really want to work, you can farm. Yeah. And if even palm nuts doesn't work, cuckoo will work. Yeah. If cuckoo doesn't work, mm. cassava would work. So stop giving excuses mm. and get to work. Mm. Will that be the one of the core principles of your life? I think so. Um, my uncle, the late George at HM, of blessed memory, is a Order is the first law in heaven. Without discipline, there's no life. And the late Professor W.N. Lane, the first dean of the medical school, Kumasi, Tommy Ko, if you decide to do anything, do it well. If you write I, it is one with a dot. Uh, 
And I remember <clears throat> when I was in Imperial College London doing chemistry, a chemistry PhD student presented his PhD dissertation to my professor, Mara. And he would usually, Daniel, just go through the dissertations and tell me something. And what I would do to open the last, well, turn to the last page. And I found something interesting. He had not finished the thesis because there was no full stop. Wow. So I told Professor. I remember telling Professor Nketiah this story, and he, he told his daughter, Professor of History, Shredi Ekwakano. Shredi Ekwakano. Don't take anything for granted. You'll be taking for granted. Discipline is the thing. Wow. So how did you get to be educated in music? Because I realized that you probably had a mentoring experience sitting with the ladies yes. as they sang over the weekends mm -hmm. about heroes who had lived a good life. How did your own music career begin? Either in education, in music, or professional expression of music. How Thank you. you. My first music teacher was a fancy man called Mr. D.K. Sam of Blessed Memory. Was a fante. Because I lived at the mission house for some time. And when I was about five or six, he started teaching me music using small wood tutor. One weekend, Mr. Sam fell ill. So he called me to rehearse hymns, songs for church service on Sunday. By the grace of God, I was able to play through. And after that, he made sure that I played every Sunday. What instrument did you play then? The organ. So you started with the organ, you started in the church? I started with the organ in the church. Right. And in 1942, my sister, a queen for sure, Mary Amponza, Mama, married Nana Opoku, the second's brother, Nana Lawrence Ose Kwame Bonsu. So in 1942, we moved to Mexia. I attended the Kumasi Presbyterian School at Edun. And he, in wisdom, bought me an organ. So on Sundays, when my friends were pounding fufu, I would be playing the organ to entertain his friends. <laughs> as, a, as a reward for, for buying yeah. me the organ. And you know, the president school, we had this Swiss and German minister helping us to play real music. Then in the saddle, I heard the late Sechi was my piano teacher. So it just continued. Professor W. N. Lane, Professor Mariro Poku, Professor of Dance and Choreography, Legon, told me, if you want to play the guitar, then start with classical guitar. But in 1951, something interesting happened in Adesada College. I had two students, Robert Osu, GBC broadcaster, and Dr. Harry Opoku of Blessed Memory. 
we were rivals, healthy rivals. So anything Harry did, I felt I could do better. So one morning, I was going to the washroom, and I heard um, Harry playing. Uh, Harry never guitar, never guitar. He promoted you. I know, I don't know. And I'm a dancer this way. So, so, so you played classical music? I played classical music. As in Beethoven, Mozart? Oh, hey, listen to something like this. Wow. This is by Aguado. <clears throat> you see? And a little bit of jazz, you know. <laughs> Things like this. But you des you're describing... <laughs> A provocation that happened 70 years ago, 1951. Yes. And you still are playing so well. Well, I think... Um, you have asked a very difficult question. Um, having worked in biochemistry for over 40, 40 years, I know one important thing in life. Water therapy. Tell me about it. You no, know, we are about sixty-five percent water, so I drink plenty of water. Number two, if somebody offends me at nine o'clock, I'll forgive him at nine o five. Why should I keep some malice in my in my head when I can use my mind to do something productive? can use my mind to do something productive? So I respect for forgiveness. Of, oh, for, yes, forgiveness. And you think forgiveness is linked to longevity? I would think so. Tell me why. You see, um, you see, it's still good and evil. <clears throat> so be your bonia. Look at King David. King David of all people organized for the death of Uriah to be sent to the hottest part of the battlefield because he wanted his wife. King David, the human mind must be used not for evil. So you're saying that if God was gracious enough to forgive David, a man who literally committed both yeah. adultery and murder, mm. because he repented, why would we human beings hold yeah. offense against one another? Another. The philosophy. Are... Okay, so let me take you back for the benefit of those who are tracking your life story, mm. back to 1951 and to Harry, who played the, the courts, uh -huh. scrammed those courts in 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 in, in jazz or, or in, in classical music uh -huh. in Adisado College. And by the way, I went to France, so you mentioned that Zadol is it's, it's a trouble spot, but, but we are, and you want black and white too, but, but I'll, the, I'll forgive you. I France remember the premier. <laughs> you know, it's an age-old battle. Yeah. For the benefit of our listeners and viewers, this is an age-old battle, so yeah. I'm sure you understand. Yeah. But let's explore the impact of Harry's provocation. Did you train harder? Did you begin to explore your own talent? Did you begin to discover that you had something you hadn't yeah. touched yet? You see, Oscar Peterson, the black Canadian pianist 
says this about music and process. If I don't practice a day, I know it. If I don't practice for two days, the audience knows it. If I don't practice for three days, the whole world knows it. Mm. Practice. Andre Segovia, the Spanish classical virtuoso, at 90 years old, was practicing six hours a day. Eight to 12. You break for coffee, then two to four. Eight to 12. Practicing. Two to four. Practicing. In a nice formula. Oh. So what I do, I've not I've been a professional, so I've, when I travel, I have one guitar on my bed, but here I have one guitar here, two there. If I wake up at about 1 a.m. and I can't sleep, I pick my guitar. If there's a tune I want, I'll just scrap it or record it. Do you still compose? Yes, I do. At this age? I do, yes. For example, um, Ionis. Okay. Wow. So what do you use these ironies for? Uh -huh. For example, I wrote a song. Naden <coughs> Sua. Some dini pani abo vuka trema mi kasa ne Saint Paul. Right. 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 You see, far goes down here. The bia you crow. We hear a tree more than kakra. We hear crow crow kakra wood. And say she and I say vinegar. And I'm quite a macomb. Now, dear Fumuna, when you are about to wash over. The rubber man told you about him. Who turned out with a tongue at all and young for so. No be the man can can see what you're doing. Tell me, when you see when you pick axe, is you see a boy sign. But you more try no. A branch is a fruit here. A fruit here, not one. Any other pet? A bit is a new show. A bit a bit a bit a tree a tree. So we just hear ba. Now we no be no. We be a turn a casa casa because we be a sin a sin a day. When two elephants have a brawl in the forest, it's the vegetation that every. So soon we are not going to move. How many assassins they say? It is better. Our rear, the jaya, and the fun, and the the more fun from money, and the more fun from money. I'm still composing. Let me take you to, let me take you to, and I'm going to ask you to play one of your compositions very shortly, but let me take you to your academic journey. Yeah. So you went to Adisadal College? Yes. And then from there? I went to Adisadal College, 49, 52. 53, I went to, home to my village, from Asi, to teach. I was a people teacher. My salary was three pounds, one shilling and eight pence. <laughs> but I was able to raise a library. Then I went to Kolebu Medical Research Institute, where Professor Nogochi established Medical Research Institute. I was trained for about a year or two. 
We graduated. I was posted to Kumasi to work under Professor Lane. He was a friend to Professor Kufu. So he said, Lane, I won't call anymore as my technician. So I resigned to, to go to Kwame Nkrumah University in 1960. 31st October. 1st November 1960, I was working at Tech. Then I met Professor Mamiru Puku. At that time, I was using steel string guitar. I said, no, no, no. So he went to Italy and he bought me a classic guitar with nylon strings. What's the difference between the steel strings and the nylon strings? Uh -huh. You see, steel will, will make marks here. On your fingers? I played for over 60 years. There's nothing there. Then you can practice for many, many hours. So, uh, Sabbath. Yes, um, I play the ball so good. Yes. Hello, I just came for, for a way to chip it in. So, so play it. I was just enjoying it. I was just about to come out. Oh, bro, don't do this to us. Does it do something to you when you play music? Yes. You see, when I was um, taking music lessons in London, they did certain tests. They would put electrodes here, feed a computer, oscilloscope, and then whilst playing, they'd be observing the waves. I said, I'm go. Electrical waves are one the most important because strings are here. We are then we need to mark them. We know we are not going to be Music, you know, it feeds. It feeds the soul. And the soul is important. The soul is what makes um, okra, no? Um, na sebi, abuwa wo, ubo wo, ubo wo meka wo. Eni le, misi ki asem di asi, eka eni le, adi abe, adi abe sanyi. E mumu, ya bo misi ki, oti, through the stomach, but rhythm, no? E ure no mu. It is a bobo, Kotogoni has. No, I said, Charge and Pabwa. No, say, go, fear, she go, what to Nabi, number one, go out of Park. So, rhythm rules the world. Right. So, do you think we should explore a bit more the idea of music therapy? I think so. Um, about six years ago, a German mathematician called Henrik Bettermann drove from Germany through Burkina Faso in his Land Rover, came to me. Said, I want to Konimo. I said, I am Konimo. I said, what's your mission? So, breath here. And the first thing I think which, inter which interested his wife was that I introduced him to my wife. That's the first thing. Ah. It's your better half. Oh. Adam, yeah, I was in Yanko Bong. No, I didn't know about Baku. Oh, yeah, Eve. But not Eve and Eva. Baku. Say the music, see, you know, and lift you. Say, what's your hallelujah, Kurosa? I said, 
handle the open composition as a slow way. The music I have been to me. Let me go for a little break. When I come back, I'm going to find out what it has done to you. So, if you just joined us, this is Springboard of Virtual University. I get the absolute privilege of exploring the life, the lessons, the philosophy, the experience of Ija Kunimo. If you have been trying to capture the lessons of his life so far, I'll tell you the ones I have been able to capture. He says, Whatever happens, determined to work. Don't give excuses. If cocoa doesn't work, palm not to work. If palm doesn't work, cassava will work. Number two, order is the first law in heaven. Without discipline, there is no life. Number three, if you decide to do anything, do it well. And don't take anything for granted, or life will take you for granted. Number four, it's about water therapy. He says with over 40 years experience in Biochemistry, he can tell you authoritatively that drink a lot of water. That's principle number four from Ija Kunimo. Number five is about practice. And I like the quotes that you give from Oscar Peterson about if you don't practice for three days. If I don't practice a day, I know it. If I don't practice for two days, the audience knows it. And if I don't practice for three days, the whole world knows no, no, no. It. It, it. is it is one of my biggest takeouts from this, this conversation. And the, the sixth one is the combination of toughness and love when you are mentoring somebody. Yes. You said if your child has measles, it takes a combination of different treatments, yes. some of which are tough hmm. and some of which demonstrate love. And you need both to be able to help somebody. I'll go for this break when I come back. I'm going to wrap up on this first part and then we'll begin to explore the lessons on the journey for Jack Winnie. Please don't worry. Don't be left out. Download the Pulse app from the App Store or Play Store to mash up all day, every day. You can also enjoy more mashup. Just buy the new Mega Bundle and get 3 gigabytes data, extra 400 megabytes for your social apps, and free MTN to MTN calls every Monday. So go ahead, feel the Pulse on MTN Pulse. Just be We're good together everywhere you go. There once was a man who had it all. He had skill, he had charisma. He was loved by all. But above all, he knew the importance of helping others, lifting others up. He knew the importance of giving other people an advantage so that they too would use that advantage to help others. All you need is that advantage that sets you apart from the rest. And when you discover that advantage, life's challenges don't seem so daunting anymore. That's where we come in. Enterprise, your advantage. UMB was established in 1972 as the premier bank for the corporate and private sector in Ghana. From our very beginning, as the only Ghanaian bank serving all categories of businesses, we set a standard for excellence and innovation over the past 45 years. We've built a financially healthy and strong bank demonstrated our commitment to our customers and to growing businesses and exhibited originality and innovation at every turn. At UMB, our focus is built around people, service, products and technology. These are the key to our present success and our future triumphs. At UMB, we are poised to make a difference not only with our customers but also in the banking industry. We invite you to share in our future. Our future starts now with you. Welcome back to my top 10 today, the special edition featuring the man christened Kwabna Buamponsen, baptized as Daniel Amponsen in the Methodist Church and ultimately known professionally and all over the world as Ija Kunimu, a legend of our time. 
he's been sharing his life and i've taken the liberty of gleaning my own principles from his life and i'm just collating them as we go but we'll come to his top 10 in part two of this very exciting interview let me talk about Kony more about your work as an ac academician it, your biography and your profile indicates that you became or in 1998 you were employed as a professor of ethnomusicology at the university of washington in seattle in the usa and then later for two for two years before taking the same position in the university of michigan tell us about your your work in academia especially on the international front first my training it was basically in science but um drumming dancing music or something like my, my hobby. But professors Kwabran Ketia and Mawiru Poku and Professor Kwapo took interest in my work. So every year they would invite me to Legon to perform. In fact, I had my group in 1953. And in 57, when Dr. Nkrumah declared independence, I was performing at the post office where we had the cenotaph. So I picked all these up, reading. So when I retired in 1998, Professor Ellis, of the Vice Chancellor then, was a biochemist. So in a humble way, he passed through our hands. As we call, you are retiring. What are you going to do? He, he was, he, he felt that um, my life should, should, should move on. So I tell the prof, Mizame Urazi, I prayed over it. A week after that, I had a letter from North Carolina. And then asked me that I should prepare to go to North Shallow City. Hey. So I went with Apigi, Professor Nkrumah, Dr. Gruber. Whilst there, Andrew K who later on wrote my biography, Konimo and his circle, a Ghanaian musician in ethnomusicological perspective. That was his PhD dissertation, Columbia University. He wrote to me that though, Ko, um, there's a job in Washington, Seattle, and I want to know whether you'd be interested in it. I said, to do what? Said, to teach your palm wine guitar and then music and dance, especially chord music and dance. And my policy, when I get an email, I reply it in the next five minutes. So they wrote to me. And so I left in 1998 to Seattle, Washington. I taught for a year. And I knew my contract was coming to an end. But the director of me said, Co, I want to make sure that you stay for another year. Professor Robin Macau, professor of piano. Now, he did something interesting too. Between June 15 and July, uh, they, they run special courses for managers. Uh -huh. So, they were to help you to get some money. I taught from the 15th of June to 16th of July. At that time, she had arranged for me to go to Annabo, Michigan. So, on the 17th of July, I was employed in Annabo to teach my type of music 
and uh, by court music and dance. That was another year. Professor Ampine is now in uh, uh, Colorado. Uh, it was interesting because I told them Adwa, Sichi, Impinting, um, Phantom from Seprua, the African harp lute, and then my type of guitar. You call it palm wine guitar. Uh -huh. I, I hear the term being used over and over again. What, what is palm wine? Yeah. Guitar? Palm wine is a local drink yes. from the palm oil tree. Yes. And there were f three Fantis, Kwame Esa, Jacob Sam, Aquabani, and Eko Kanta. They formed the Kumasi Trio. In 1928, they, record, they, were, they were invited to Britain and recorded 24 tracks. Two of the tracks were about Yam Ponsa. Yam Ponsa was a beautiful woman who married a cocoa broker in Achimapeja. She taught ballroom dancing. And any time Sam and others went to Apeja, she would treat them with all Ghanaian decency and Ghanaian hospitality. Sam fell in love spiritually with this great woman. But as a poor guy, he couldn't express it. So when they were in London, he recorded Yamponsa, Jawar, you know. The song became a hit. Now, According to Professor Atana Mensa, also professor of ethnomusicology, a crewman taught Sam how to play. And for Palma, he used only the thumb and the first finger. Palma, I don't know. Now, when I was in Mencia, after my Saturday job, I would walk down to Kegetia, where they had his 78 shellac uh, gramophone, his master's voice. He was selling gramophone records. I would listen to these great musicians, Sam, Kwame, Kankam, Apiani, Apiagekum, Kojobiu, Mreku, Kabra Mesa, and what have you. These were great musicians. And being a young boy, my mind was malleable, so I was Learning, the uh, learning, uh, imbibing everything. So that was the thing. So this is what I taught in um, in um, in um, Seattle. And Seattle and, 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 yeah. Let's go to your awards. Uh -huh. Mission. I know you are president of the music musica, yeah. musica, and then also the former chairperson of COSGA, the yeah. Copyright yeah. Society of Ghana, yeah. and you also were recognized at various national music awards and so on. Tell me a bit about these awards and what they did to your person in the music. Um, an award, in, in simple terms, is a recognition of your contribution to your community. And President Rollins gave me an award of civil division Prof, uh, President Kufo gave me Member of Voter Award. Then the Asante Man Award. But I think the most, one important uh, was the Living Human Treasure Award. That was from the UNESCO. And Lady Auntie Becky Tando uh, from Kuntansi. Through so Professor Champong, they did the interview. And I flew to Germany once, and on my ticket was Human Living Treasure Awardee. Wow. I didn't know. So when they called the first class, the military, the disabled, they were Daniel Lamposa, Human Living Treasure Awardee. I was just walking. How did you feel? Oh, I brought freaking my power on Hoko. <laughs> then I was also given the Kwame Nkrumah African Genius Award. Um, that was also very, very interesting. The first time I met Professor Kwame Jeche. He taught me philosophy. 
I met this great man. And when I had to read the tribute for the late Rosalite, I thanked the audience for arranging for me to meet Professor Kwame Yeche. What do you like about him? Oh my goodness. African philosophical thought. Now, I, what are you talking Captain Rattray wrote a book, Ashanti Proverbs, and the title was The Primitive Ethics of an, a Savage People. I am in Timbro, but I am in Yemide. Primitive name, savage name. But the way Professor Kwame Jechi analyzed the British anthropologist, okay, and the way he analyzed, look at our proverbs. Yembe, yem philosophy. As I said today, yem Ah. Yem so, he gave me a hug. Seko, you introduced me, his daughter. Sir. In fact, I'm trying to collect all his books. And the way he analyzes, then, Professor Abraham, then he will, Abraham will, they all in Alessandra College. They are my seniors. I love him. Let me find out about your fears. What is your biggest fear in life? My fear. Oh. Let me quote Goethe. Death is a commingling of time with eternity. And the death of a, a good person, eternity is seen looking through time. Was Socrates one. Um, I think my greatest fear is fear. For death, you mean so? Because it's a common denominator. It should happen. Mm. You know, when Socrates was charged with no changing the minds of the youth, you know, you don't know better than I do. Plato and others were planning to take him away that night. But Socrates said no. I would take the hemlock, a principled, wise old man. And I have a song about Socrates. He had a wife called Xantipe, who was reasonably very quarrelsome woman. And he was hugging, nagging all the time. So Socrates would leave home to the marketplace, quest people. One day they had a row. They were told, Xantipe poured a bowl of water on Socrates. The old wise man sat down. You know what he said? My wife Xantipe, after all this thunder, I'm not surprised to see a drop of rain. So I did the issue and trying to it. But the interesting thing was this. Because of the nagging, we drove him out of home. He converted that liability into an imperishable asset, mm -hmm. philosophy of Bongo. Will that be one of the principles of your, your life to convert your liabilities into assets? Yes. Explain it for the benefit of our audience. <laughs> uh, my uncle, I guess, um, or that the first, told me this. If you have a row with your wife, put your two hands in your pocket. Get out of the house. Come back in the evening. Now, is the banana oil in a way? Convert liability. So you're, so, and I link that back to your point about forgiveness. Yeah. That in times of strife, just, just move on and look beyond the challenges. Yes. It's a beautiful time of learning and listening to you mm. and before we sign off i'm going to ask you to play the song you mentioned about uh, about socrates but before you uh, sign off what gives you the most joy pardon what gives you the most fulfillment and joy <laughs> I, th I think it's just it's divine um 
just a, a simple story. On 14 September 2014, I was hospital. I was put in hospital at 10. And one night, around about 12, 12 midnight, I had a visitor. I saw me call men yarai, men yarai, nyamiti I woke up. I told my wife I had had somebody, a visitor. He said, you are imagining. He said, I'm not a small boy. I'm not imagining. Now, I will see Gumi. Now, some of say, Unyami, you both. And Queen, would you have me? One fine chimney. Say, I do so de Bequa, me to me, but Miss Shrove say, Brian Bobo, we are seeing my men, my men, you many pants and me. This was my. Can I attempt to, to transcribe it for the benefit of our audience? <laughs> Um, so Bonimo describes a time when he was sick in hospital <laughs> and he says he got a visitor that he believes was divine and that visitor assured him not to despair because God is alive. And he said thank you to God and assured God that life itself that he has received is a gift and at any time he can take it away. But before he takes it away, he should allow him to give everything that is in him yeah. as a gift to humanity. This has been Springboard of Nature University just listening to, interacting with, and benefiting from the life, the wisdom, and the experiences of Ija Ko Nimo. I want to say a big thank you to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your time, and thank you for the lessons of your life. And for you out there, I want to say a big thank you to you for joining us in this discussion, this very blessed time of instruction and learning, right here in the gardens in Kumasi. A big thank you to MTN Pulse, our sponsors, UMB Bank, the Enterprise Group, the Multimedia Group, and the Graphic Communications Group. Next, we could bring you part two of this discussion with Jeff Williams, finding out his top ten. But let me tell you my top ten from this conversation with him. And it's very simple. Number one, whatever happens, determine to work and don't give excuses. Number two, order is the first law in heaven. Number three, if you decide to do anything, do it very, very well. Number four, drink a lot of water, water therapy. He says after 40 years experience in biochemistry, we are 65% water, so drink a lot of water. Number five, he says if you don't practice for a day, you will know. If you don't practice for two days, the audience. For two days, the audience will know. Three days, the whole world. Three days, the whole world will know. <laughs> so the fifth one is practice. Number six is that mentoring is a combination of tough and love, toughness and love. Number seven, the termite has no shovel and no implements and yet builds mansions with lanes in between. Number eight, when I get an email, I reply in five minutes. And that's for you, those in the corporate world. Number nine, my biggest fear is not death, but fear itself. And number 10, convert your liabilities into assets. Join us next week as Jack Winnie gives us his top 10, not my top 10 from the discussion with him, his top 10. So we come away again. My name is Albert Okramsi. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you.